And now for something completely different. Today I'm going to show you how to make this cool steampunk top hat. Look at that. That's really kind of cool, right? Out of two pieces of three millimeter foam. That's all that is. And look how cheap this is. These are only $1.27 each. Wow. And then a bunch of these little flicky two millimeter ones. In the end, this is going to look like this. Pretty freaking cool. If I can do it, you can do it. So stay tuned. Okay, and the way I got started with this project was I got myself some, um, I think it's three millimeter foam. Um, this is 18 by um, 18 by 12 wide and only three millimeters thick. I got this at Hobby Lobby for a whopping $2.27. Um, for this top hat, you're gonna need two of these. All right, and then the other one that I used by the same company, by Silly Wings here, there's another one here, comes in different colors also. This one's two millimeter, and it's the same 18 by 12, but much thinner, okay? Actually, this is three, this is two, and this is actually, a, it feels a lot thinner, but regardless, that's what we're gonna use. And I use many sheets of this. We'll get to that later. So, for this one, uh, this is what I used. You can get this in larger sizes. Um, I haven't found it in local stores in larger sizes. Doesn't mean it's not there, it's just I haven't. You can order them online if you want to. It's very cheap and easy to do. But I am one of those need it right away type thing, so I went out and got what I had. So, most of this was already done prior to me taking any video. Um, I'm going to try to catch up to speed. I didn't think that this was going to become a whole project that I was going to show everybody, but it just was so cool that I decided I wanted to share, so now I'm kind of backtracking. So I took my foam, okay? That's what I did. And for now, we're going to use this piece of paper to represent my phone. Foam. Foam. So what you do, you're going to take your tape, which you measured your head with, or string, whatever you use. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be this. I happen to have this um, this uh, old measuring tape, which worked out to be, uh, what I say, 23, 24 inches is what it was. And what you do is once you get your measurements, you can lay this out on your paper in the shape that you want. I've seen people do circles. I've seen people do ovals. I chose to do an oval for some reason. I can't explain why. I just did. So... You're going to find your center, your paper, or your foam. Let's just make believe that that's the very center. And you're going to mark out using your, your string or tape. You're going to mark out your centerpiece, okay? All right? And then you're going to make it neat, not rough like this, but whatever. And that's going to be the hole. That's going to be the center where your head goes, all right? Next, after I had this line marked out and in place... I measured out three inches, okay? And then using the best of my ability, I made another hole or line to mimic the inner hole. So you have your inner part of the brim, you have your outside of the brim, and this is what I came up with. Of course, it was on the foam. Then using a sharp knife, and I can't, I can't express enough that you have to have a sharp knife, sharp blade. Carefully you go and you try to make your hole you make your outside line, and then you have your brim, okay? That's what I did for that. Then I have my brim. Now, the center part, when you cut this out, save this, because this is going to be the top of your top hat, okay? So, I had that cut out. That used one whole foam. Then I went and I got another piece of foam, the second piece. And what I did for that one, having it lengthwise, I measured from the edge up, I measured... Uh, eight inches okay drew a line and I had eight inches then I cut that out okay because that piece is going to be the um, the uh, crown I think is that what it's called the crown of the hat so basically when you cut it out you can take it and you're going to do this with it all right you're gonna do that now for me this is only 18 inches, I needed 24, so I used the other end, flip this over, measured up from the edge, 8 inches, cut that out, and then I was able to do a combination of this strip and this to make up my 24. I cut them out, joined them together with, with my adhesive, okay, using this stuff right here, all right, 
all you have to do is use this you, you put it on the edges wait about 10 15 minutes for it to dry because you don't want to do it wet glued them together and they held good to go then then again there are lots of other people that have done this already so you can follow their videos if mine's being too confusing I get it I should have done this from the beginning but I didn't so now I have my crown I have my brim what I did is I glued I applied glue because this is a hole now I apply glue to this area of the hat here okay it doesn't have to be precise just you know in that area because all this is gonna get covered anyway so it doesn't matter and when the glue dries it doesn't leave too much of a residue so it's not very visible so I glued that then I took the edges of my hat on here I glued them again this is all foam and then I just took this and I put it in place and I slowly worked around till it was on the edges until I had it all the way around and at that point I had the basis of my hat done okay and that's what you see here the basis of the hat just a square I mean squared flat the brim was still flat the the crown piece here is, is basically two pieces of foam put together to make my 24 inches it's done then it's time to put the uh, very top piece of the hat on as you can see here okay that is there's no top there yet okay and what you see the difference in color between the light and the dark is the EVA glue I took and ringed around with the glue and then I went to the um, the top piece which is the the center of the brim here that I cut out and saved I did the edges with EVA glue and I let it dry for about 10-15 minutes once it was dry I carefully put it into place so I made it as level to the top of the hat as I could and then our hat the basis of our hat was complete it looked like that what a tool but yes that's basically our hat now came the fun part after I had the basis of the hat done it was time to make the um, patches the metal patches that or what appear to be metal patches and I took the two millimeter foam and I gritted it off like you see here into um, four by three squares or square rectangles okay use the entire sheet no scrap left over it's great um, and the other thing is too, if you get into this and you like this, scrap pieces, put them in a bag, put them in a box somewhere, save them because you never know when you can go and use those parts again, cut them out to something smaller or what have you. So it's always good to keep it. In the case of this, I didn't have any extra. I just cut out the panels and I think I used maybe four sheets of this um, material to make my panels. Now, once I had my panels, we go back to our hat. There's our hat. Okay, and what I did to do this is just pick a spot and begin. Okay, um, I would take one of the patches. Okay, let's say this patch right here was the first one uh, for sake of argument. I would put it where I wanted on the hat, held it in place, took my pen, and I drew a line around where the patch was going to go. All right, this way I knew when I removed it where it was going to be, and I placed my glue, painted it on, and I painted it on the patch itself, and I let them dry. When they were dry, 10-15 minutes later, I put the patch in place, pressed it in place, and it stayed. And I just went all over the hat until the entire hat was covered and looked like fondant cake to me. <laughs> exactly what it looks looks like. And you can see here, here's the lines from when I was drawing and putting the patches on and everything. And down on the brim, I wrapped them around so they go and do the underside of the brim also. And it looks like that. Okay, and once I, I just let this set overnight just to make sure there was no problems with it. Uh, once it was nice and dry, I went around with my very nice sharp blade. You go through a lot of blades when you're doing this because you want to keep it sharp. And then what I do is when they're too dull for this, they're still really sharp. And I put those into a separate container and I use them for when I'm modeling. So everything gets reused. It's really cool. Um, but then I trim this out with a new blade got it nice and, 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 and smooth again, used my Dremel at a low speed and I was able to, to blend it all in nice and smooth for my head. And then we had ourselves a nice top hat. Very cool, very, very cool. So after our hat was all 
covered with the patches, the faux metal patches. Um, what we did is we got this this stuff called Plasti Dip. All right, what it does is it gives the hat a rubber coating. It seals in the the uh, the um, foam. Okay, this way, if you if you didn't put this on first one of the things that would happen is that the foam would just suck up a lot of the paint. In this case, it makes a, a rubber barrier over the foam and seals it. So now we can apply paint, especially if we decide to spray paint this. It'll take less paint and it'll get a really good coverage. You won't get the blotchiness as the foam sucks in the, um, the paint. So that's what we did there. It also adds rigidity to the hat. Uh, of course, now it's water resistant. If it gets a little rainy out on Halloween night, we should be good to go. Um, and it helps, you know, maintain its shape. Okay, so that was that. Okay, guys, here we are with our steampunk top hat that we're working on. Um, things got a little upside down on this build, and um, I had to fix it. And let me show you what I did. If you remember from the last section, we were using the tacky glue. Um, the original video um, from the person who had this, um, his suggestion when he was doing this was to use uh, five minute epoxy, mix it up and apply it with a match kit, a match tip. And um, I thought that would be a hassle. You'd have to mix the epoxy, you'd have to apply it, then you'd have to mix more epoxy, then apply it, wait for it to dry, and it was just, it just seemed like too much of a hassle. So that's why I went out and I got this tacky glue, because it's a thick gel, and it's a never-ending stream. You just pour, blah, 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 and just keep going. There's no refilling, there's no remixing, you just keep going. But what happened with this is, as you saw in the last video also, it looked good. It sat there and it, it looked good, but as it dried, it leveled out. So when I came back to the hat later, it had um, just dots all over the hat because it, 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 it just settled down. So I said, okay, let me try the epoxy thing. And the epoxy thing wasn't working for me either. Aside from the hassle, it was. Um, when I would move the hat to go to different areas, it would run. And it just got real messy. So I said, scratch that idea too. So my idea was this. I went to Hobby Lobby and I got these googly eyes or wiggly eyes. And these are really tiny ones. Okay. So my idea with that is apply the glue using the wiggly eyes, put them in its place, and voila, you have your rivets. And it worked really good, except some of them would keep falling off on me, which is expected. Matter of fact, one just fell off here. Um, but what I figured I could do is after they are glued in place and dried, then I'd apply the Plasti Dip, in this case a second time, which again, hindsight, my first time doing this, um, I should have waited, apply these, and then use the Plasti Dip. And the Plasti Dip will go on, coat everything, and also add an extra adhesive over top and to the hat itself. In most cases, because as I said, this one fell off. So they are still kind of fragile in a way, but the look is pretty cool. So after it dried a second time with the Plasti Dip, I went, spray painted the whole hat black, and now we're going to move on to some painting. The real fun's going to start. Okay. Um, before I show you how to do it, let me show you how it looks. Hang on. Okay. What you're looking at here was another side project I was doing at the same time as the hat. Um, and this, the hat was made out of two pieces of foam. This was made out of one piece. I think it's pretty freaking cool. What it is, is a steampunk cat mask. Okay. Pretty neat. Okay, so the application is the same with this as it was with the steampunk hat, but what I wanted you to see here is the coloring. Okay, what I did is after it was plastic dipped, I just took the color of paint I want. In this case, I'm going to be using a, um, a gold paint. Let me see where they are. I have them over here somewhere. Here we go, two of them. We've got rose gold, okay? It's a craft acrylic, and we've got worn penny. All right, and what you're doing 
and I'll show you on the other hat but what I did is I just took a little bit put it on a on a palette dip my finger in it and then just started rubbing it in wherever I can reach I can reach if I didn't reach it I didn't reach it that's life and then this is the look it gives it's got a really cool metal look to it I know the lights kind of does that make it look better don't know but anyway that's the way it looks I think it looks pretty cool and it gives a worn metal look in the case of this hat the rose was the color of all the metal um, the worn penny was the wires that I put all over the mask so that's how it looks and this is the effect we're going with on the mat on the um, on the top hat so hang on we'll be right back okay so here's what I did I took my rose gold put it on my little palette right here and I'm just gonna tip my finger in it it's acrylic it's not gonna hurt me just dab it off a little bit and then I'm just gonna start rubbing it in and around the rivets including the rivets and rub it in you're not looking for a full coat you're just rubbing and adding color to it and the more you rub the more of that metal look that it has as you can see there and that's it just gotta do it to this entire hat <laughs> so it's gonna be a little tedious so hang on we'll be right back and that's how you make a steampunk top hat i hope you enjoyed it i have to admit i'm amazed at how simple this was and how durable and cool this is i mean it really does in my opinion and i'm the least of modest people how much it looks like it came from a store it really does it's pretty cool i hope you like it I'll put some uh, still shots in the end so you can take a really good look at it. If you like this video um, and you'd like to see more in depth, like I said, there's tons of people out there that do this. Um, but let me know because I have an idea for another one that I want to do. So if I do do another one, I will be glad to detail a lot better than I did in this one. This is kind of cheesy and goofy, but um, this way you can make your own. And this was so much fun so much fun I couldn't help myself that I actually made this also this is a steampunk cat mask okay um, this was made out of one piece of foam it's absolutely uh, hysterical to me um, I can't believe how well it turned out um, uh, if you look up steampunk cat mask um, you can get, meet the guy who originally came up with the idea and patterns if you so choose to buy them um, but yeah, it's just, I think I used three millimeter foam for the basis of the hat. Um, the patches that you see all around it were done with uh, two millimeter foam, EVA glue. Uh, it, it, it's, it's just all done. The wires were actually just solder. Simple uh, and cheap. Um, and for my first time, I'm really, you know, I'm making a mask. It's really cool and I can see myself building more. So, again, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this. I know you guys are styrene modelers and stuff like that. It's not really my, my uh, you're not really the audience for this type of thing, but just think of something kind of cool. So, until next time, guys, be strong.